Yep, I talked to one store owner who hoped that law would not pass in Iowa. Right now, there are four firefighters at the station here. The fire union says to help show what exactly cleanup crews are going through tonight. If you can imagine all that cooking grease going into a water and causing a mess similar to this one, only it's not happening in this jar. It's happening up and down Brush Creek. Well, Mike, the area where we are standing right now looked like this last week when flash flooding moved through West 103rd Street. Now, one week later, with a new batch of storms likely to come through, those businesses remain boarded up with plenty of damage inside. You'll find signs like these everywhere in Clinton, small and simple, but showing an unwavering support for law enforcement and the values this town represents. Great people by nature. It's a slogan the small town of Clinton, Missouri strives to uphold and one officer Gary Michael lived by. I've known Gary since he was about 16 years old. Gary was a service oriented uh, young man who uh, took his commitment to our, our town very seriously and uh, he gave his life for it. In the few short days since 37 year old officer Michael was shot to death during a traffic stop on August 6th, the community has banded together in a way unlike ever before. Hundreds of people lined the streets from Kansas City to Clinton as his brothers in blue escorted officer Michael home. It, it was the most, you know, beautiful and terrible thing I've ever seen in my life. I don't ever hope I don't ever see it again. Strangers, colleagues and family continue to add to a growing memorial right in the spot he was gunned down. Messages of support are displayed proudly outside nearly every business. As a community, it hits us really hard. The memorial procession passed through the town square where Courtyard Bar and Grill sits on the corner, a place where everyone knew Officer Michael's order before he ever sat down. He just ate there the Saturday before he died. I don't think he expected to die over the weekend. Like I just, he just got out of the car and just did his normal job and was doing his normal thing and just didn't expect, you know, for somebody like that to hurt him. He left an overwhelming impact with us. Gary was a uh, was quick witted. Uh, he smiled easily and he had a he had a very uh, easy gentle way about him. He's a good man. Now Deputy Chief Lynch tells us it'll never ever be the same here in this town without Officer Michael. Right now their main goal is to honor his life and who he was starting with the vigil here at 830 in the town square. Everybody is invited to come. In Clinton, Missouri, I'm Sarah Plake, 41 Action News. Many in Kansas City, the St. Patrick's Day festivities start very early with the parade. And so, therefore, so do the countless requests for rides. So today we're hopping in with Haile here, who's going to show us firsthand just how crazy it does get on St. Patty's Day here in KC. St. Patrick's Day in KC, packed with music, dancing, and drinking and stress for cab drivers like Haile Mercuria. You know, a lot of drink involved. In a day where Mercuria says only about 10% of his clientele is actually sober, he says it's also his busiest day of the year. Be professional and handle them. Dealing with drunk customers is just part of the job, says the 20-year-old cab vet, but it's a little bit more challenging on this 13-hour workday. They don't know even remember their address, where they want to go. They, they can't remember where their address is? No. So what do you uh, do in that situation? So that situation, you have to call the police because, you know, I can't take his ID from his wallet or something. Sure, that makes sense. And even if customers can remember where they're going, there's also those who try to drink in the cab or try to turn it into a party bus. They try to get in eight, nine people on your cab. Then come the inappropriate questions, according to Mercuria. Like how? <laughs> you don't want to say. <laughs> it, it's not for TV. Huh? Is that your answer? You can't tell us because it's not for TV? Uh huh. Okay, yeah. I hear you. I hear you. All right, that's fair enough. We're a family oriented program here. Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but despite all the nonsense, Mercuria loves his job and says it's fulfilling to know he's helping people get home safe. People they are now using when they drink, you know, they use taxi. You think more people are calling for rides? Yes. That's great. Bethel Neighborhood Center has been a beacon of light for immigrants and refugees for 106 years. Today, a special celebration marking a groundbreaking for expansion to welcome even more people into this diverse KCK neighborhood. <laughs> Laughter, love, inclusion, thriving at Bethel Neighborhood Center in the heart of KCK. Una familia. It's like a family. Una familia. We're like a big family. And there's so much to celebrate. The building that served as a refuge for immigrants, the needy, and any Wyandotte County resident will soon see a major renovation. 
a goal only accomplished through faith and endless support from the community. You know, it was very scary when we first began. Two million, there is no way, but God made a way for us. Bethel made a way for people like Elvia and her family. No hay discriminación. There's no discrimination. They treat us all the same. They receive us with so much love. Her five sons came here since they were little for the after school and summer programs, a saving grace for parents who are trying to make a living. They're not going out and joining gangs, walking around by themselves because they can bring them here and they're safe. That's something that's been really good in this neighborhood. I'm an immigrant myself and I experienced that so I know the, need, the kind of help they need. The renovation means doubling the number of people they serve in an increasingly diverse part of the metro. And it is important for them to build uh, their families up. And we always say we're not handing down things, but we are handing up so that they will become self-sufficient. They hope to have this renovation completed by next year. In KCK, I'm Sarah Plake, 41 Action News. Every Friday evening, the Mystics cricket team gathers for practice. A team often finding the joy of competing together as one. But for teammates like Sukumar Subramaniam, this season feels much different than any other. So he would run in, you know, he was a tall, lanky guy, so he would run in and bolt. Bowl fast. Sukumar's good friend Srinu Kuchibotla, the victim of a February shooting at an Olathe bar, now an alleged hate crime. For Sukumar, the tragedy and his friend's absence still seem tough to believe. He never felt like he was gone, <laughs> so it's still difficult that, you know, to the hour he's just not here. But on this pitch, the memory of Srinu lives on. Like I said, always calm, collected guy, you know, never gets angry. Uh, uh, always there for you. A team that will soon be playing for a person close to their hearts. Three months after the tragedy, the Mystics now plan to hold a memorial cricket tournament in Srinu's honor. Sukumar says when he steps up to the plate, Srinu's memory will be on his mind. With the tournament just over a week away, Sukumar knows for his team, the cricket games will carry a special meaning. On a personal level, at least for our team, uh, it, it is going to be a little emotional playing this tournament than any other tournament. A way to honor a good friend and a way to show strength and unity in the face of tragedy. The best way to honor him, you know, from our end is, is just play to the best of our ability. In South Kansas City, Tom Dempsey, 41 Action News. Independence police officers and firefighters took to the sand to duel it out, raising money for Officer Tom Wagstaff, who was shot in the head while responding to a burglary in March. Truly one big family, whether it's uh, the thin red line, the thin blue line, whatever it is. Even people who aren't first responders came out. This is just a great tournament. The turnout is just phenomenal. You know, we always support, my whole team supports every first responder out there. It's just awesome to see hundreds of people still coming out and, and wanting to help out any way they can. We'll, we'll take that. And they're playing with positive news on their mind. Yeah! Officer Wagstaff is now fully self-sufficient. He has no tubes, no um, no wires, no IVs. Uh, he's breathing on his own. He can speak. He speaks to his family, his friends. Uh, he remembers everybody. And uh, not only does his family um, go up there and visit him, but uh, the IPD family goes up there and visits him regularly too. They're planning a huge homecoming when Wagstaff comes back from rehab in Nebraska. They say it's what a true hero deserves. We all realize this is a miracle. Fortunately, we get to say that uh, Officer Wagstaff will be here to enjoy this one day with us. In Blue Springs, Sarah Blake, 41 Action News. It's such a powerful image to see these fireworks over the same community that was ravaged by a tornado just four months ago. And as Oak Grove celebrates our nation's independence, there are signs of progress everywhere you look. March 6th is a day this community will always remember. It was terrible noise, terrible noise. An EF3 tornado touched down in Oak Grove, damaging hundreds of homes. I don't know if one person that didn't felt like they were impacted by the tornado. After four months of cleanup, Parks and Recreation Director Scott Matson drove us through Ben Oak Park, home of the city's 4th of July party. We're trying to make this where we all can come together for something fun as opposed to uh, the hard work of elbow grease and helping one another. You see signs everywhere. The young trees were planted through Project Relief. A school uh, bus to take donations for tornado victims and a record number of workers and volunteers. Those fours are single. All leading up to their biggest fireworks show ever not only for the spirit of our country, but for the spirit of Oak Grove. We're hoping that we can turn the emotional 
side of it into a celebration from what we all went through in March. Now all the festivities out here were free tonight and again I just want to reiterate how majestic it is to see these fireworks over the same community that was devastated just a few months ago. I don't think there's anything more powerful than that. Reporting in Oak Grove, DOL, 41 Action News. It was a light to the world. 37-year-old officer Gary Michael. He had a, a great heart, giving heart. Um, he wanted to serve, that's why he was a police officer. Was working at his dream job. And this is where he wanted to work. He wanted to spend his time and his career, raise his family here. And protecting the community he loved. He grew up here in Clinton. He wanted nothing more than to work for Clinton. Gladstone officer Leah Law went to the police academy with officer Michael. Upon our graduation, Clinton wasn't hiring, and he, he always joked, he's like, I'm going to get in, I'm going to get in. And uh, it was well after we graduated, he called me and he said, can I use you for a reference? Um, Clinton's hiring. And I, I giggled and I said, well, duh, of course you can. Michael served and protected Clinton for less than a year. Then, on Sunday night, one man's one bad decision took that life from us. Police say Ian McCarthy shot and killed him during a traffic stop. Officer down, I repeat, officer down. I didn't want to lose him, he's my friend. He was my big brother, he was my hero. And while he's now gone, he'll always be a part of our lives. He was a husband, he was a, he was a father, um, and he was a brother. His legacy and his memory will never leave his hometown. He left an overwhelming impact. Gary was a was quick-witted. He loved people. He had a very uh, easy, gentle way about him. He was a people person. He was a happy-go-lucky person. His smile. His smile. He smiled easily. And he had a An infectious smile. His goofy smile was what got it a lot for a lot of people. He's a good man.